Okay, guys, so we're back looking at part two of three for the knowledge area business analysis planning and monitoring. So we've just in the previous video looked at the first tasks. Now we are going to look at planned stakeholder engagement and what that's all about. So in the context of business analysis planning and monitoring, when you plan stakeholder engagement, you've got the following elements to consider. You have to perform a stakeholder analysis. You have to define stakeholder collaboration. And then stakeholder communication needs needs to be considered. So just keep in mind where we are at, at the moment. We are at the business analysis planning and monitoring stage of business analysis. So we are really in an ideal world. We'll be upfront, getting ready to do our approach. And part of this would be to also look at who do we need to talk to and what their needs are. All right. So let's start with the very first element, perform stakeholder analysis. <clears throat> so this is when you would identify the roles and responsibilities of all the stakeholders that's on your initiative. You'll consider their attitudes so that you can understand how you need to communicate with them and how much you engage with them. Decision-making authority. So identify how much authority a stakeholder has over the business analysis activities and the changes to BA work that you are involved with. And also identify who will be the approvers in your initiative. And then another aspect of this element is what is the level of power or influence a particular stakeholder or stakeholder group has over the business analysis aspects of the project. All right, so some of the techniques that you can apply to perform this particular part or analyze these particular elements for this task is the first one is the stakeholder matrix. So you'll find in chapter 10, that there are quite a few different ways that you can analyze stakeholders. So you can refer to 10.43.1 to look at more detail around this particular technique or diagram. But essentially what you're doing is you're plotting the influence of a particular stakeholder or stakeholder group over your initiative and specifically your business analysis work, but also what would be the impact to this particular stakeholder group. So the work that you are doing, how much of an impact will that have on this particular group? And once you know that about every stakeholder group, you're able to determine how closely you need to work with them and how much information they need to keep them on the right side of, of a good project. Another technique that you should look at, or another diagram, I should rather say, is the onion diagram, the stakeholder onion diagram. Now, this is really useful when you have to think about who are all the stakeholders that needs to be considered for your particular initiative. And that's when you start by looking at the solution delivery, the affected organizational unit, the organization or the enterprise, and also the external um, stakeholders that might have an, an influence or some power over what you're doing, but they also may need to be engaged with. So this is a really useful diagram. And finally, one that you might be very familiar with is the RACI. So this is where you determine who's responsible, who's accountable, who's consulted and who's informed in terms of business analysis work that you need to perform. It's good to also be in close collaboration with the project as a whole or the project management office when this particular activity is performed. Now, if we look at the element around defined stakeholder collaboration. So here it's all about what factors do you consider when planning collaboration activities? Now let's have a look at what that might look like. So when you define stakeholder collaboration, you need to think about things like how often, so what is the frequency of 
collaborating with stakeholders. What tools will you use to help the collaboration? Or what preferences might your stakeholders have in terms of how you collaborate with them? How do you deliver information? Will it be workshop format? Will it be emails? Will it be a combination of things? And what locations do you need to consider? So will we be physically meeting in one place or will it all be virtual meetings and so forth? The next element here is you need to look at the stakeholder communication needs. So this is a bit about how do you communicate with them? To what level of formality do you need to communicate? Again, look at frequency, look at who you need to talk to, what do you need to tell them? What level of information do they require? And when do you need to do that? So that was briefly planned stakeholder engagement. Now, although this might sound like a short task, there is actually a lot of consideration that you need to give across all of those elements. So I suggest go and read that task's detail in the student notes or in the Babok guide itself just to make sure that you get all of the depths of that particular task. So let's now jump right into plan business analysis governance and see what this task is all about. So the purpose of plan business analysis governance is to define how decisions are made about requirements and designs, and it includes reviews, change control, approvals and prioritization. So the four elements that I would like us to run through is decision making, change control process, plan prioritization approach, and plan for approvals. So this particular task is actually crucial for the business analysis work to be executed in a successful way throughout the life of the project. So it's an important one for you to understand all the elements of and be able to apply to real world scenarios. So let's start with the first one, decision making. So what they say here is that the key step here is for the business analyst to define what happens when teams cannot reach consensus by identifying escalation paths and key stakeholders who has final decision making authority, especially with bigger initiatives where a lot of people are involved. This is really quite an important particular escalation strategy, if you will, that you need to define up front and do this in collaboration with the rest of the project team. Then, of course, a very important one is the change control process. All of us would have had some exposure to this, either in a very formal way or an informal way, or in a way where it should have been formal because of chaos that erupted. So let's think about the change control process and what you as a business analyst need to consider when you plan for this. So yes, do you follow a change control process? I suggest think back to a number of different initiatives as part of your preparation for this particular exam and think about what did they do for change control or what did you do for change control and how well did it work or didn't it work? Okay, so what should be included when you define a change control process? Let's do a flash quiz and see what, what we land on. So the first question is determining how a change will be prioritized is not part of a change control process. So although we haven't gone into any detail around the change control process, I want you to have a think about this one. So determining how a change will be prioritized is not part of a change control process. Do you think that's true or false? Right, one, two, three. That's actually false. The next question, if a change to a requirement will bring no additional value to the business, then this means the change is not valid. Is this true or false? So think about what we're saying here. One, two, three, it's false. There may be other reasons that you need to make a change. So 
it might not add direct value to the business, but it might be a regulatory need that came in that requires change to your requirements. And then the last question I think is a change to a requirement can occur at any time during an, an initiative. Is that true or false? True, of course. We all know that change come at any stage and we need to know what the process is for managing those changes. All right, one more question. A change control process only ever applies to changes greater than a certain size. Is that true or false? False. So if you look at the Babel guide, they explicitly say that this is in fact not the case. The size of a change is not a determining factor unless you make it a determining factor as part of your process definition. And then the very last question, this time for real, a change control process should identify designated approvers. Is that true or false? So just think about that for a moment. Of course, true. Otherwise, how would you ever know that you should or shouldn't implement a particular change? All right, looks like we've actually got another question. So a change control process should be defined as part of business analysis governance activities. Now, this is sometimes a million dollar question, but let's remember we are talking about the Babel Guide. So we need to study the Babel Guide and the Babel Guide says yes, true. Well done. So now that we've had a very different approach to looking at the change control process, before we jump into this element, please go and read more about the change control process because the Babel Guide actually lists a bunch of things that you need to consider when you build your change control process. And this is probably quite an uh, important um, topic for you to understand in terms of exam. So please go and refer to the notes as well as the Babel Guide. But let's now jump and look at the element plan prioritization approach. So how do you do your prioritization? Or how would you like to plan to do your prioritization for your initiative? And that's what this is all about. So here you have to look at things like timelines, the expected value, dependencies between requirements, resources and constraints. So here you need to think about how formal will prioritization be in our initiative? Who will be involved when we do prioritization activities? What techniques will be applied? And what would the criteria be? That's quite important. So later in the Babel Guide, there is in fact another task that goes into quite a lot of detail around prioritization. So we will talk about that again. Now let's look at this element, plan for approvals. As I mentioned before, it's a really useful and also important thing to plan for because it helps you to transition from draft to final documents much smoother if it's a clearly defined process. So first of all, decide what needs to be approved. So which types of artifacts will need approval? Who needs to approve them? How do we get approval? Is it structured walkthroughs? Is it emails that people just review documents? Is it one-on-one -on -one, um, get-togethers? Exactly how do we, what process will we follow to get approvals. What is the methods and how formal will it be? And then of course, let's plan for those approvals. Make sure that they're in the project plan so that we've got enough time to get documents out and approved. So those are the considerations when you talk about the element of planning for approvals. Okay. Now this particular task, plan Plan Business Analysis Information Management. This is about developing an approach for how business analysis information will be stored and accessed. So we'll talk about that particular task in the next video. However, for now, let's please raise some questions about this topic in the Facebook group. 
So we've talked about stakeholder engagement that you need to plan for your stakeholder collaboration. And we talked about business analysis, planning for governance. So what will be the business analysis governance activities? What examples do you have from your real world experience? Please share that with everybody. We don't all have the same examples and we certainly don't have the same experience, but it will help all of us to understand each of these tasks from a different perspective and we'll be able to interpret exam questions so much better. And then do you think there's a particular point that people need to be aware of in order for them to be successful with these tasks within the exam? Right, thank you very much for watching part two of three parts of the business analysis planning and monitoring knowledge area. Thank you.